Okay, so this is your um, graphic organizer that we have for the notes on the Klondike Gold Rush of 1896. And one of the very first things that you guys need to remember, so double check this on your notes right now, is that as soon as you start taking down information from a website, you need to record information, enough information, so that you can go back to that website when we have to get what we need for our bibliography. So you should have all of this information filled in on your notes page. So double check that, make sure that's there. Okay, it helps if you have the website name, the article name, and then the URL. That way if something was copied down on the URL, most likely you can Google search again and locate the website that you were using. Okay, then Seth did a really good job here by recording notes. He just jotted down facts, he jotted down uh, words and phrases. We don't have complete sentences here. He did not try and write his paper in these boxes. And that was one of the very specific reasons that I gave you this smaller space. Down at the bottom, he's chosen a quote here that he's going to use somewhere in his paper. So good, he's in really good shape. So you can see that he has three different sources here. So check and make sure that you have three separate sources on your notes. And then we watched the video in class together and we took a few notes from that video. Now, as I told you at that time, we won't get a quote from the video. We're just gathering some additional information. And the reason I had you do this was I wanted you to see that videos are considered a valid source of notes. You can gain information for some really good videos. And if you think about it, websites like Nat, or uh, television shows like Nat Geo, you know, Discovery Channel, History Channel, that's a great source to get information. It's pretty valid. Facts, facts and double checked. After we got all of your notes taken, the next thing we had to do was we had to start coding our notes. And if you recall, what I asked you to do was I asked you to take that red colored pencil and identify any note in your any note in your graphic organizer that you might be willing to use or able to use for your introduction, mark it with a red I, or a red C for a conclusion. And I don't see any C's on here, I only see one I. That's perfectly okay. Your conclusion can be what you sum up does not have to be something from your notes. But if you see something on here that you thought would fit into your introduction or fit into your conclusion, you were gonna mark those with the red I's and the red C's. Red being a power one, it's the number one paragraph, number one sentence. The next thing that I asked you to do is I asked you to go through and identify your power twos. Your power twos are going to be your key points or your main ideas of the essay. And you can see here that we have a main idea here. We have a main idea here, one here, and another one here. So how many you have does not factor into anything as long as you have more than one. Um, you're, if you ha don't have very many main ideas, then you want to relook at or rethink, is this truly a detail or is this a main idea? Everything else you have left then, including your quotes, become power threes and you'll notice that Seth has his identified by D as in detail and it's in the color green. So once you have it coded as to what type of note that it is, is it a power one, a power two, or a power three type note, then you have to go through and you have to figure out how do I link these together. So what I asked you to do is I asked you to number your details, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, however many you have. And then I asked you to look at each detail, and you can see here that this is an excellent example. This detail goes with his number one um, main idea. This one goes with his number four, number four. This one goes with his number two. This one goes with his number four. This one goes with his number two. And this quote will fit in really well with his number two idea or key point. Or excuse me, number four. So everybody should be at this stage, correct? How many of you, thumbs up if you have at least all of this done. Yours looks like Seth's, in fact, that it's got coding and numbers on it. It's linked. It's coded and linked. Okay, excellent. So this is how we do coding and how we do linking. The next thing that you have to do is you have to figure out how you're going to organize your essay. How in the world am I going to organize this information? And there's two ways you can do that. You can do it by time order or chronological order. In other words, this is what happened in 1896 when the gold rush got started. 
and this is how more and more people began to get there, and this is what happened when it started to die off in 1899, and fewer and fewer people were still in the Yukon. Or you can do it by categorical order. In other words, you can group these ideas into categories. Like here's information about the Stampeders themselves, here's information about the location, here's information about the profiteers, the people that went up to open up businesses, hotels, and saloons, here's information about um, whatever. So you group them by category, and then you have to decide which category makes most sense to be presented first in my paper. For example, doesn't it make more sense to tell the location of where this is taking place before we start talking about the profiteers that get there? So you have to use your sense of logic and order. What makes sense? If I were writing this paper, how would I want to read the order of this information? Okay? All right, so this is where everybody should be at this point, and that should have been just a brief overview of how to code and link your notes.